If you've been a programmer who's worked with others at any point in the past, then you've probably been engaged in a conversation about which code editor is the best. And a code editor is not the only opinion-based thing that people argue a lot about. People also argue a lot about Linux distributions or programming languages or even frameworks for those programming languages. And amidst all the arguments in favor or against a particular tool, rarely does it result in one being objectively better than another. And that's because the reason there's so many options in programming is because there's tons of different use cases that they might be used for. And the result is usually tools that have some trade-offs, tools that are better at one thing but not so good at another. And code editors are no different. There really is no objectively best code editor. And there was probably some people fuming watching this video right now saying, well, obviously VS Code is objectively the best, you know, or Vim is objectively the best. Or, you know, I like Atom, so maybe I would say Atom is clearly the best. I learned long ago that there is no best editor. If I say something like Atom is the best editor, I'm usually just doing it just to spark a debate about it. There was probably a point in time in the past where I would have argued passionately about a particular tool, whether it was an editor or not, saying that this is indeed the best one, and if you don't think so, then you're wrong. The problem is absolute statements like that where you say this thing is the best, period, end of story, often don't survive under scrutiny. So because there's so many use cases for so many different things, I want to take a second to dive into what actually makes an editor really great. And I came up with a total of six things that if I think about what would be an objectively best code error, it's these six things I would think of. And that's availability, performance, cost, support and longevity, extensibility, and compatibility. I will just briefly cover each one of those. I've also ordered them roughly in order of importance. The first one is availability. When I'm talking about availability, I'm talking about whether or not a particular editor is available on the platform that you use. When I think of an objectively best code editor, I think of a code editor that is available on all major platforms. Fortunately, for the most part, all code editors are more or less available on all platforms. The one that comes to mind that is not true of that would be Visual Studio. Not to be confused with Visual Studio Code, aka VS Code. The next consideration for what would be the objectively best code editor would be the performance of that editor. And this is an area where editors differ quite widely. I see in general four types of editors, electron-based editors, Java-based editors, native UI toolkit-based editors, and then terminal-based editors. And when we think of lightweight versus heavyweight, terminal, of course, is going to be the lightest weight possible. The heaviest weight is going to be electron, because electron is essentially a Chromium tab on a browser. And this is going to affect the performance a good bit. Obviously, native UI toolkit is going to be pretty good performance. Terminal is really good performance. Java, not so much. And electron is probably the worst. And part of the reason why Electron is the worst is because those editors use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to render the editor. So you can imagine if you try to open a 10,000 line file in something that's rendering it with HTML and CSS, you might wind up with 100,000 lines of HTML. Whereas with a terminal editor, it's not 100,000 lines of anything, and it's probably just what it can show on the screen. It's not even rendering the rest. So whereas terminal editors can probably navigate a million line file just as well as a 10,000 line file, an editor like Atom or VS Code probably won't even be able to open that file. But this doesn't necessarily mean that Atom and VS Code is terrible and terminal editors are great. There is, of course, trade-offs. The one big upside of electron-based editors is that they receive updates from the underlying Chromium platform, and also they have great compatibility across platforms. And the same is true for Java-based editors such as any JetBrains product. So although there may be an objectively best editor in terms of performance, it's just one piece of the big pie. The third thing I want to look at is cost, and people don't often think about this, but it is kind of a big factor. The vast majority of editors are entirely free, but there are editors that either come at a direct cost or an indirect cost. So when we think about a direct cost, we're thinking about you have to pay X dollars to get this editor. So an example of that would be JetBrains products. Obviously not every JetBrains piece of software is paid, which is to say that like PyCharm Community is free, but PyCharm Professional costs money. When we think of indirect costs, we're thinking about like Visual Studio. So Visual Studio itself is free, but you need to have Windows to access Visual Studio. And then on the Mac side, Xcode is free, but you gotta have a Mac to access Xcode. So if Xcode happens to be your favorite editor, you have to have a Mac for that. Of course, if you already have a Mac or use a lot of Apple products, then that's probably not a big deal. And the reason cost matters is because a lot of paid products end up being superior to their unpaid equivalent. And the reason is because they put an entire team around improving JetBrains products because they're making potentially tens or hundreds of millions of dollars on the software, so they're able to fund continued development. Whereas other products are just going to be open source, and those are going to depend on community contributions, or sometimes they're backed by other organizations. 
The other reason the cost is a feature is because if you're using paid software, you have to worry about getting really attached to that software. And so if they increase the price on you, you either have to pay the increased price or switch to a different editor. I'm here to tell you that that's a real issue. I used to use WebStorm back in the day, and that was by far the most superior editor that I think I've ever used. And it was very, very difficult to switch from that to Atom. I switched to Atom when Atom came out. And it took me a, probably a few months to get used to that switch. It was very difficult. And the reason I switched is because they kept changing their software model. They used to sell you a piece of software and free updates for a while, and then they switched it to more of like a subscription kind of service. And I saw the writing on the wall. I knew that they were going to keep charging me for use of the software, and I decided to just, you know, make the change and just deal with however hard it was going to be to switch to a different editor. Next consideration for editors is support and longevity, and we sort of already talked about this with the cost, but this is about how long is this piece of software going to be maintained, and is there a possibility that it just becomes defunct one day? The reality and the crux of most smaller open source software is that it is reliant on community contributions for that software. And if that person decides, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore because it's unpaid or I have other projects I want to work on or I'm too busy with normal work, then they can just say, I don't want to work on this anymore. And that's kind of it. Fortunately, most major editors do have a good deal of support and longevity, which is to say that, you know, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code is backed by Microsoft. Atom is indirectly backed by Microsoft because GitHub owns Atom, Microsoft owns GitHub, and then a bunch of other ones are also supported by their respective organizations to include JetBrains products, which of course is the commercial offering and is well supported by their company. The next consideration for editors is extensibility, and this is all about how good can you extend an editor to do different things. So this would be like packages for Visual Studio, plugins for JetBrains software, packages for Atom and VS Code, and other things. Extensibility is a great thing that makes a code editor great because oftentimes the base editor itself is not going to do everything you want it to do. A lot of the very valuable features for an editor are going to be community packages that you can install to extend that editor. And this is true of virtually any editor out there. And the final consideration is compatibility. When I think of compatibility, I'm thinking about what sorts of files and things can it do, and then also what other things that are part of your workflow can it tie into. And this is kind of an area where JetBrains gets you. JetBrains software typically has fantastic compatibility, but not for their free stuff. If you want deep integration to your entire workflow and you want to use JetBrains products, you're going to end up having to buy and use the professional versions of that. And this is true whether it's PyCharm Professional, IntelliJ Ultimate, PHP Storm, WebStorm, or others. Obviously, Visual Studio is probably going to have terrific compatibility, but only in the context of Windows. Which kind of makes sense, considering Visual Studio isn't available outside of Windows, so they just have to care about that one thing. And to be fair, Visual Studio is an amazing IDE. It's, it's top tier for Windows development. At the end of the day, a code editor is just a tool like anything else, and the best possible editor out there is the one that makes you individually the most productive you can be. There is absolutely no such thing as an objectively best code editor, because if there were, then everybody would use the same one. But just like all their tools, there's strengths, there's weaknesses, and there's trade-offs to each editor. And it's definitely okay to debate the merits of particular editors. It's okay to say Atom can't load huge files, but Vim can. But it's not okay to say if you're using Atom, you're wrong, you should be using Vim, because that kind of statement doesn't hold under scrutiny. Anyway, that's it for the video. If you have any comments about editors or something that you think I missed or you'd like to add, definitely leave those below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care.